A brief overview of the book of Revelation, episode 3, from chapters 11 through 15, the 6th of April, 2023, analyzed according to the literary structure of the Greek tragedy, episode 3, from the time of Jesus' birth through the present age into the end times three and a half years, culminating in the wrath of God. Learning objectives for this session include to identify the woman, the dragon, and their actions, to identify the first and second beasts, to find the rapture or the resurrection of the saints in the book of Revelation, and then to describe the coming wrath of God. Thus, this session will cover several points, certain signs announcing Messiah's birth, how Satan fell from heaven, how Satan makes war against Jewish Christians, then a ruling beast's arrogance and identity, how Jewish Christians are gathered around Jesus following the death of Christian believers, awaiting the Son of Man who will come in clouds to harvest the earth before the wrath of God is poured out on many nations. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. There were flashes of lightning, rumbles, peals of thunder, and earthquake and heavy hail. Heaven was opened to whom? Discuss this amongst yourselves. What happened to the historical covenant ark? Since the furnishings of the ancient tabernacle were modeled after realities in heaven, the ark of the covenant with God is in fact his faithful alliance with Israel under the symbol of the covenant box. Lightning, rumblings, peals of thunders, earthquakes, and heavy hail were seen by ancient peoples as signs that the gods were angry, and in the Bible, that the true God is stirring. A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. Astronomers employing sophisticated software have demonstrated that the signs that John refers to were astronomical phenomena, some of which occurred at the time of Jesus' conception, others at the time of his birth, and others at the arrival of wise men from the east and the star that guided them to Bethlehem. So take these as astronomical data that early Christians had recognized as signs from God surrounding the birth of Jesus. We understand that the woman is the mother of Messiah, whether understood as Israel or as the Virgin Mary. Birth pangs was a second temple era trope for difficulties that would announce the coming messianic age. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, but her child was caught up to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. In this text, we find references to distant past history, to present history, and to future history. Distant history relates to the time when Jesus ascended into heaven, where he currently rules from the throne of God. In present history, the woman has taken refuge in the wilderness. And in the future, she will be nourished for 1,260 days. Texts such as Ezekiel 20.35 lead us to understand that the wilderness represents the Gentile nations where Israelites have been kept 
safe for nearly two millennia, with the occasional pogrom, of course. Who were the rest of her offspring? Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. We understand that the rest be Jewish Christians because they both keep the commandments of God and carry the testimony about Jesus, the commandments being from the Tanakh, or the Hebrew Bible, and the testimony from the Gospels of the New Testament. They worshipped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it? The beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for forty-two months. We understand from the book of Daniel that beasts represent imperial structures. These structures exercise so much effective power that they seem inescapable. And for 42 months, again, a reference to end times chronology. Also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them and authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation, and all who dwell on earth will worship it. Here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints. Again, we have references to the past, to the present, and to the future. Satan made war upon Israel as Roman armies flooded across the land wrecking havoc for about seven years. That occurred under the Roman Empire, which eventually gave way to the Islamic Empire and is currently being absorbed by an internationalist empire publicly represented by the World Economic Forum. Thus we must endure opposition with faith in Christ until the return of Jesus. Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns, like a lamb has, and it spoke as a dragon. It exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence. The reference to earth in our translation is a term usually used of the land of Israel, sometimes the surrounding territory. So this seems to be a beast that arises either in Israel or in Islam, drawing much of its power from billionaires who rule through the the World Economic Forum and through the new BRICS alignment of nations for economic control. It is called a lamb, suggesting a false messiah, since Jesus is titled the Lamb of God. This authority, is this the new world order? Will it be led by a World Economic Forum young leader? No one can buy or sell who does not have the brand, that is, the name of the beast or the number for its name. This calls for wisdom. Let anyone with understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a person. Its number is 666, though some ancient copies, manuscripts of the book of Revelation, read 616. This second beast is called a person. The Greek term anthropos means a human being. Is this then the end-time antichrist? Those who read the Bible in Greek calculated the name for Kaiser Nero to add up to 666, whereas Latin readers following a similar process conclude it was 616. Either the latter altered the previous manuscripts or the previous altered later manuscripts. The process involved here is known as gematria, that is, using alphabetic letters to represent numerals, 
Latin did this. If you are 60 years old or older, then you learn to read Roman numerals in school. Hebrew likewise used letters of the alphabet to represent numerals. Greek did the same. And then to find the gematria of the Nero Caesar, Greek readers transcribed his name into Hebrew as Neron Kaisar. By taking the value of each Hebrew letter and adding them up, the total came to 666. Latin readers, however, pronounced the name Nero Kaisar, transliterating into Hebrew and adding up the gematria value of each letter, the total comes to 616. But just in case Antichrist should arise from the Islamic world, then we may, be ha- we may have to calculate the name from Arabic or Farsi letters. Then I looked, and there was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. They have been redeemed from humankind as first fruits for God and for the Lamb, and in their mouth no lie was found. They are blameless. Where was Zion? This term is used five ways in the Bible. First, for one of seven hills surrounding the city of Jerusalem. Secondly, for the city of Jerusalem itself. Thirdly, for redeemed inhabitants of Jerusalem. Fourthly, in the epistle to the Hebrews, it speaks of the heavenly city called Jerusalem. And later in the Revelation, Zion will be the new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven onto earth. Thus we have here a view of the intermediate state of those who have left the body and gone to be present with the Lord. Late in the end times, when perhaps believers will be missing from the earth, it will be angels who have a threefold message for those who remain on the earth. These are, Fear God and give Him glory. For the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water, recalling the contaminated water of the previous episode. Another shouts, Fallen! Fallen is Babylon the great! She has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her prostitution. The third one explains, The smoke of their torment goes up for ever and ever. There is no rest, day or night, for those who worship the beast and its image, and for anyone who receives the brand of its name. Thus, we who follow Jesus, we are to remain faithful at all costs. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God, and hold fast to the faith of Jesus. This includes the many thousands of Jewish Christians who both keep the commandments of God and hold to the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead who, from now on, die in the Lord, or belonging to the Lord. Says the Spirit, They will rest from their labors, for their deeds will follow them. Yes, the commandments of God, our deeds, our labor for his name's sake, all of this will be rewarded. Yet we will be saved and given everlasting life solely on the basis of our faithful belief in Jesus. The phrase, faith of Jesus, is ambiguous in English. It can mean either faith in Jesus, or faith like Jesus' faith, or possibly Jesus' faithfulness unto death. A clever theologian such as John may imply all three. The rapture bus arrives. 
the resurrection of all Christian believers to be caught up in the air with those remaining, revealed in chapter 14. Then I looked, and there was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man, with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. One like the Son of Man does not mean one who is not the Son of Man. Rather, this phrase is quoted from the, epist- quoted from the book of Daniel, which was written in Aramaic, whereby the phrase like simply signals, here is his description. Those who cannot find the resurrection of the saints that they call rapture in the book of Revelation are looking for the language of the Apostle Paul. But John is using the language of Jesus, who himself had said, Once my message has gone out to every nation and every ethnic community in the world, then the end will come. You will then see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Another angel came out of the temple, calling with a loud voice to the one who sat on the cloud, Use your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, because the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. Another angel refers back to previous verses at the work of angels. But some ask, why would Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man, require an angel to come tell him that he now has permission to remove believers from the earth? Well, Jesus himself had explained to his followers that the future timing was known only to the Father, and the Son of God, now incarnate in human flesh, does not know that hour, nor do the angels. So an angel is told by the Father in heaven, Go inform my Son that the time has come. So the angel comes and calls loudly to Jesus in the clouds, The hour to reap has come, and he does so. So the one who sat on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was reaped. But there's a second reaping. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. The angel swung his sickle over the earth and gathered the vintage of the earth, and he threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. We take this to mean of the unbelieving at the end of this age. Thus there are two end-time harvests, the one removing surviving saints from the earth into the heavens with Jesus, and the other the destruction of those who deserve the wrath of God. This distance, or as some versions say, furlongs, is approximately 300 kilometers, or about 200 miles, because the Holy Land, Palestine, or Judea, was covered with Roman highways, all of which had distance markers from Rome or from other important cities, Ancients knew that the length of the land of Israel was about 300 kilometers, so thus this remains the approximate length of present-day Israel. Then I saw another portent in heaven, great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, for with them the wrath of God is ended." or soon will be. And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its names standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Why the song of Moses from Deuteronomy 32? Many of these are Israelites, Jewish followers of Jesus. They also sing the song of the Lamb. They love Jesus. In conclusion, then, we have seen how this episode 
begins with the birth of Jesus and his ascension into heaven, transitions then into the fall of Satan to earth, who then pursues the nation of Israel, who takes refuge in the wilderness of the Gentile nations, and then turns his attention to the persecution of Christian believers. This was under a first iteration of the beast empire, which was Rome, which then was superseded by the Islamic empire and is currently transisting into a one world order. This will soon lead into the final three and a half years during which all Christian believers will be resurrected from off the earth to meet Jesus in the air, which some call the rapture, followed then immediately by the wrath of God poured out on disobedient nations through seven plagues that will be described in the next episode.